Hi, I'm Stephen Keller, and welcome to the second part of our Speech Recognition Basics video series here at LumenVox.com. In this part, we'll continue where we left off last time. We talked a bit about some different types of applications that use speech recognition. Well, this time we'll talk about the actual process through which a speech engine recognizes a speaker's speech. We'll also take a look at some different types of speech recognition software. And then finally, we'll take a look at two different concepts that are really important in speech recognition, the grammar and the vocabulary. They're similar, but really important to understand what they are and how they work. So let's go ahead and continue our discussion with a look at the process of speech recognition. Now, this is a pretty broad, general, high-level overview, and it's going to be specific mainly to LumenVox speech recognition and similar types. So there are some other speech recognition software that don't follow exactly this process, but it'll give you a pretty good idea of exactly what's going to happen. So the first thing is the speech engine, that is the speech recognition engine, the piece of software that's going to do your speech recognition. Sometimes you also hear these referred to as automatic speech recognition systems. Same concept here. So the first thing it does is it loads up a list of words that you want recognized. So you can only have words get recognized if you define them in advance in this list of words. We call this list of words the grammar. So once we have this grammar, the speech engine also needs some audio. Uh, the audios of a speaker may come from a microphone or a telephone, maybe over some kind of computer application, lots of different ways to get audio to us. Uh, in that case, what we do is load it up, and then the speech engine breaks that audio down into a mathematical representation of audio called a waveform. And it's going to go ahead and take a look at certain key mathematical characteristics of sound. It's going to break it up into its constituent sounds, and it's going to look for these key distinctive features of speech. Uh, we're going to be able to separate speech from other sorts of background noise. That's important. And we're really going to be looking for the individual sounds that make up a language. We're going to be looking for those sounds, the transition between sounds, all sorts of technical things to help us figure out exactly how this audio relates to spoken language. And then we're going to actually look at, we have these internal acoustic models built into the engine. And they're these huge sets of speech data, essentially, that we've taken and lots and lots of different speakers transcribe their speech and that model becomes essentially a big database for the engine to understand how sounds, well, sound. So we go ahead and we compare the audio to our internal acoustic models searching for matches using your grammar as a guide. It's kind of like searching uh, a, for a web page using a, a search engine. Well, we're a speech engine. Instead of searching the web, we search these acoustic models. And we return to you a list of results. This is what your application gets. And just like searching on a web uh, search engine, we don't just give you one result necessarily. I mean, we'll give you the top one, and that's probably the most likely match. But we'll also give you other possibilities. So we'll say, the most likely thing that we heard that matches your grammar is this word or phrase. Uh, but here's another one, and here's another one if you want to try some of those as well. So that's the sort of basic bird's eye view of the entire process. Uh, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about how speech recognition can differ. There are two sort of broad classes of speech recognition software we want to talk about, and that's speaker-dependent software and speaker-independent software. Speaker-dependent software is most commonly used for, say, dictation software. This is software where you have to actually spend some time with it, training it to use your voice. And by training, I mean, generally speaking, you've got to read some predefined text into the engine, maybe 10 or 15 minutes worth of text. And while you're doing that, the engine is carefully studying how you speak. Last week, we mentioned that you speak with a very distinct speaking style. Every person's voice has its own characteristics. The engine learns how you pronounce words and phrases and sounds, and it uses those to build acoustic models tailored to you. Now, this is all well and good. It lets you produce very accurate type transcription. You can have very, very large vocabularies, that is, large numbers of words to be recognized at once. And that's important for dictation. If I'm going to just be speaking naturally and you're going to transcribe everything I say, I need to have literally 100,000 or more vocabulary items because adults know lots and lots of words, more than you probably realize. And we use them as well, so we need this sort of training so that it can really understand your voice and have a lot of different options. Now, the downside of this software is pretty obvious. 
you have to sit there and train it and correct it. And it's a lengthy process. I mean, just beyond reading 10 or 15 minutes of uh, prescribed audio, you've got to work with it and correct it, and it slowly adapts to your specific speaking pattern. That's no good if you have a telephone application. You got an IVR, a call center, call router, or something like that. You can't ask your customers to call up and spend you know, an hour training the software before they use it, right? That's, uh, that's not feasible. So we have also speaker independent software. And that's what Lumenvox makes. Speaker independent software doesn't require any training. Instead, we have these acoustic models and they're more generalized. We're not gonna build an acoustic model just for you. So the nice thing about this, of course, is no training is involved. Anyone can call up and use it. It's independent of the speaker. Downside is that we don't have as large a vocabulary at once. We can't recognize 100,000 plus words or whatever that you need for dictation. So speaker independent software is not generally used for dictation, just sort of transcribing natural speech, but it's great for telephone applications. Now, you can still have large vocabulary, say thousands or tens of thousands maybe of words, but you can't do natural speech transcription. All right, so Lumenvox, we make speaker independent software. And it's great for all sorts of things, like I said, IVRs, call centers, call routers, all that kind of stuff is going to require speaker independent software. All right, and so with speaker independent software comes two really important principles. Because we have limited numbers of words to be recognized at once, we need to specify which words we want recognized in advance. And we do that using, well, these things called grammars. And a grammar is a file on a computer that has some structure to it that tells the engine which words need to be recognized. So if we have a call router, our grammar file might consist of all the names and departments that we want recognized at that call router. Um, now, there's some other stuff that can go in a grammar. You can have, for instance, some programming, something called semantic interpretation that can go ahead and do other things. If we hear this word, then do this. If we hear this phrase, do this, etc. So grammars consist of words and phrases and sentences, and there's lots of different ways you can order them, and a couple different file formats you can use as well. And all that's covered in other videos on the site. Now, the other thing that's important to understand is that you can have multiple grammars loaded at once and you can kind of load and unload grammars dynamically as you go about. So for your first prompt, maybe you need these grammars, and for your next prompt, maybe you need one of those grammars and another different grammar, so you can load and unload as you go. At any given time, the speech engine can only recognize all the words in your loaded grammars, and that set of words is called the vocabulary. So the vocabulary is sort of the sum of all your grammars. If you have 10 grammars that each have 50 words in them, your vocabulary consists of 500 words. And the vocabulary is always going to determine what words can be recognized at once. Um, this is going to really influence your prompt design, and your prompt design is going to influence your grammar and thus your vocabulary design as well. Like I said, if you have a menu, you might have commands available as part of your vocabulary. And then for the call writer, you have names and departments. Now, one important thing to understand when you start getting involved in speech development is that, generally speaking, smaller grammars equal higher accuracy for recognition. What you do when you have a smaller grammar is you narrow the search space when we do that searching of our acoustic models using your grammars. So what happens is if you get really big grammars, you have a higher chance that two words or phrases sound very similar. And when that happens, it becomes harder for the speech engine to differentiate between them. You also just generally increase the search space and thus decrease our accuracy when it comes to recognizing words. So, generally speaking, smaller grammars, smaller vocabularies equal higher accuracy. You can successfully use large vocabulary uh, applications. We have some that have thousands and thousands of words and phrases, and they work pretty well. Just know that these are going to be harder to develop, they're going to take more time to build and test, and they're going to require more sort of troubleshooting type things. Now, this is a pretty good place to stop our discussion of speech recognition basics. If you want more information, we have lots of it here at LumenVox.com. Our resources section on the website contains tips, white papers, frequently asked questions, all sorts of stuff about speech recognition. And the video section here under the support section has all sorts of videos to get you started. We have grammar creation, we have stuff about speech application development and design considerations, um, semantic interpretation like I mentioned before. So all of that is here and available at LumenVox.com. And if you still have questions, feel free to contact us. You can always contact technical support by emailing support at LumenVox.com and we'll be happy to answer any technical questions you may still have. Thanks and good